So we look at, uh, at mining as an activity and what we said was that in general, whenever any decision is made to undertake mining activity anywhere on earth, that activity we have to understand that it will impact on the four major reservoirs. The atmosphere, wherever you do the mining, the atmospheric component will be there. The biosphere, the humans, the plants, the animals, all those things, those of us who love grass cutter and other things, all those may be impacted in a way. The hydrosphere, the water bearing component, mining cannot be done without what? Water, in most cases. So the, the hydrospheric component will also be impacted. Then the lithospheric component, the rock that we are going to take, the material itself, and then also the soils, they all may form the lithospheric component. So once any decision is made about mining, these aspects, major reservoirs of the earth. Now the geochemical reservoir is actually defined as a region on or around the earth or within the earth of approximately uniform composition. We say approximately uniform because you can have within the lithosphere, we have water also more or less infiltrating. Within the atmosphere, we have some solid particles. So we say approximately uniform composition. But mining activities will tend to impact on these four major reservoirs to varying extents, of course, but that should be at the back of our minds insofar as the environmental impacts will be concerned. Then we take a look at what we are more or less at home with, the water bearing component, the air, the humans, the animals, the plants, and then the land itself. So whether it's large scale LSM, medium scale MSM, artisanal and small scale ASM, in some cases there are definition, a question of definition. Some medium scale mine in some other place may qualify as a large scale mine somewhere and vice versa. But for the purpose of discussion, we'll just you know, classify these according to textbook kind of definitions. So any activity, and for that matter, any mining activity will tend to impact on the environment in various ways. Then we take a look at a few basic questions that we, we talked about. What do we mine? The nature of what we mine, the nature of the material, may influence the impact on the environment. Then we look at who does the mining. And as we talked about, are we having one person, two, three, four groups of people? Are we having unskilled, skilled people? Etc. Etc. They may all factor in so far as the environmental impacts are concerned. Where we do the mining, that is also very, very crucial because the location of a mine may tend to detect, in most cases, the extent of impact that you may have on the surrounding environment. Now, why we do the mining? And I was just explaining that in some cases, you may, it may not necessarily even be economic, but then nations or people can decide. Indeed, in South Africa, for instance, when they, they were under apartheid and then the sanctions were imposed on them, they made a tactical decision, a strategic decision to go in for coal, the convention of coal, into oil. They developed that technology. It wasn't economic, but they had no choice. So why we do the mining may also determine the extent of impact. So you see that they went in for lots of coal, to, in order to transform that into the liquid or the liquid oils or whatever, the fuels that they needed, and by so doing also burn a lot of the coal in order to get what? Electricity. Now the impacts on those things, the impacts of the coal, etc., on the environment would have been enormous. There are a lot of debate these days about whether we actually have to use that. Now when we do the mining, Coming back home, seasonal, sometimes it rains a lot during the rainy season in our part of the world, and then during the dry season you don't get what, rain at all. All those ones may also tend to detect the type of impacts that we have. And then, most importantly, how we do the mining, the methods used, etc., as how we extract, how we go into process, how we dispose of what, the waste, etc., etc. All those things can have obvious consequences on the environment. Now one of the things too that we also have to factor in carefully is that mining may have impacts on the environment, yes, but then the various stages may have differential impacts. 
So that also has to be taken into consideration. We usually we take mining as the process of just going into what? Do the extraction, getting the material from where it is. But mining is a process, and that process may have various stages. The initial stage where we go in to search for the material we normally call exploration, to search, to go looking for the material. Now, the impacts in that sense may not necessarily be the same as the stage where you go in to what? Extract. And once again, for the extraction, you may have to take transport. You may not necessarily take the material and then what? Process there. So once you begin to transport the material, the impacts may also be what? Different, or impacts may be associated with that. Now, are you transporting the material just to a near point or to a far off point? All these, the proximal distance, near or far, all these may have what? Differential impacts on the environment. So we have to factor these things into our equations or discussion. Now, processing, how we go in to take the useful one that we want from the bulk of the material that we are interested in that may also have what distinct impacts and then i just listed a few here physical there are physical methods sometimes of separation chemical biological etc and combinations of these now all these things may tend to influence the environmental impacts so in a sense we actually have to be careful when we are dealing with what impacts of any mining activity in any uh, particular location now, marketing is the stage where a lot of people may be smiling and laughing because they get the money and they are happy, right? So there may not be so much impact, but maybe socially, because a lot of when people are happy, right, th there is also some impact there, right? So maybe <laughs> they'll go and drink alcohol. Maybe some can dance, some can sing, some can do a lot of things. So marketing is a stage that normally you don't tend to have so much of impact that we think about. But as my good uh, friend is saying, sometimes the impact can also be what, <laughs> in a different sense. And then one of the most important things over here has to do with closure, when mining activities would have ceased. Now those ones, when you have closure conditions, may even tend to impact for a very long time on the environment far more than we anticipated. Some of the consequences we can't even predict. So if we are looking at the impact of artisanal mining on the environment, we have to take into consideration these distinct stages. Now, what are some of the major factors insofar as uh, environmental impacts are concerned? Now, I've listed here there are some local factors that may impact on uh, mining activity within a particular environment. There are also global factors. For example, a few years back, when the price of gold was around nearly $2,000 per ounce, you had a lot of people going in to what? To explore, to mine, right? Now, when the, the price of gold came down up to about 1000 you had a lot of companies, what? Moving away. So in that sense, at a local level, within the place where mining would have taken place, once you are getting so many companies coming in and exploring and mining, the impacts will normally be what? Okay, very huge. And that is not only for the large-scale companies. Now, a few years ago, when diamonds, in the same way, when the, the price of diamonds okay, on the world market dipped, you had a lot of people transiting from diamond to gold. So you go to the diamond bearing areas, and what you saw was that the impacts were rather far more reduced. Okay, so local global factors, some of the global factors, we may not even have control over them. So they may be extraneous, and therefore they are imposed on the local situation. But nevertheless, they tend to have what? Significant impacts insofar as the environment may be concerned. Now, the nature and type of artisanal mining activity. The nature and type of artisanal mining activity would also detect what kind of impacts you have on the environment. Then, the geological characteristics of the mineral or material mined. Now, most of these minerals occur in minute amounts compared to the surrounding material. Now, how do they occur in that, in that environment, in the host environment? How do we take that out? How do we process? How do we extract? How do we process? 
What is the waste component? What type of minerals are associated? All these things would also tend to what? detect what kind of impacts we have on the environment. Now, the stage of artisanal mining activity, I just talked about that. Is it at the exploratory stage, uh, the, the, the extraction stage? All these may also come in. The geographical location, where the activity is located. Is it in a forested area? <coughs> is it in an arid area? Does it rain a lot? Do you have what? Obvious weathering, etc., etc. So the geographical location would also tend to have significant impacts or not, depending on where it is. A number of participants involved, right? If you have a mine with huge numbers of workers, right? As opposed to one that may have a few. Now, obviously, the impacts on the environment may be what? Different. Now, the scale of the mining activity, we just talked about large scale, we talked about medium scale, we talked about small scale. Now, these ones may also be location specific or size spe or country specific. But still, if we were to take a relative kind of situation where the small scale will be the, at the tail end, the, the, the lowermost part of the mining, uh, what do you call it, spectrum, and then the medium scale in the, in the middle portion, and then the large scale, the huge, you wouldn't expect a large scale mine to have obvious impacts as what? A small scale mine. Sometimes, cumulatively, they may be different. For example, if you have several artisanal miners working thousands and thousands of them, we've all seen the, the, the impacts in Ghana. If you go to Sierra Leone, Liberia, most countries, you see this in Burkina Faso. Obviously, if you have several of these people working in several places, even though they may work in what few areas, if you were to compound, if you were to more or less what, accumulate this, you see that the cumulative effect will be what far more even from the small scale or the artisanal miners compared to a large scale mine that is more or less located in a well-defined area. Um, history and duration of artisanal mining activity. In some places, there is a history of mining. In fact, in Ghana, in West Africa, we we'll see from the geological map, you know, in a few distance, and you see that spread out across West Africa, we have all these mineralized areas, areas that are rich in gold, in some cases in diamonds, etc. So people want to go in there and then take these. So sometimes these may also detect the type of what? Uh, the type of uh, environmental impact that we have. So if you go to some areas in Ghana, in fact you have historical type of pits and others. They have what? Some of the waste piled around. So historically, if you have something there and these things begin to what? Break down. The material begins to release the, the various minerals and elements, as opposed to an area that is far more fresh, pristine, that hasn't seen so much of mining, the impacts may also be different. Then you look at the, the duration of artisanal mining activity. If we have a, an artisanal mining activity in an area and it's just about maybe three, four, five months, compared to an area where you have, let's say, three, four, six, ten years, you will normally expect what? Far greater concentration of waste of mined out material in the place of longer duration than one of shorter duration. Then we look at the mining and processing methods. I'm sure Prof. Amankwa, my, my very good friend, would have dazzled you with, with all those things yesterday. So you know more about processing than I do. Now, from the process, the type of mining, and then the methods that are used to extract the material, those may also detect the impacts. The processing methods, how you go in to take your useful material from the unwanted material, the way you go about all those things may also detect. Now, I brought here governance issues. Now, what are the sort of rules and regulations that govern mining activity in any given area or in any given country. Now, these are also crucial insofar as environmental impacts are concerned. Uh, Justine was talking this morning about the fact that they have some challenges. The EPA is supposed to regulate, do a lot of things. So, what are some of the governance issues, the rules and regulations that may also contribute to these impacts? And in any case, governance issues are now becoming far critical because it has been realized that 
overall, if you are going to have impacts, and mostly negative, we, we tend not to talk about positives, we may talk about a few of them. But these governance issues, governance issues would also be very important. What are the rules? What are the regulations? What are the laws? Okay? Did the laws factor in certain things at the local level? We probably have to look at all these things. Because it's not just having the laws on paper. Someone said that laws don't work. It's rather what? People that do. So you may have very what? Good laws. But if people are not prepared to work with the laws, then you are going to have what? A lot of what? Challenges. Then information availability and then also dissemination. Information about mining activity or activities. Are these things available? Are they easily available? Can people access them? Okay, what are the modes okay, of accessing the information? How do we let people know the dissemination of information about mining, about the impacts? These are also quite crucial in terms of what? What we have to discuss. So I'll go on to ASM specific impacts, environmental impacts in Ghana. And once again, we look at the land resources. I'm not going to go into the various aspects because we all know, okay, the land resources, the water resources, air quality, noise and vibrations. In fact, if you go to some of these areas, sometimes the noise is so deafening that you may not even be able to. But you wonder because the people will be working without what, okay? Any type of what? Safety gear. Okay, health and safety gear. Mind waste, public human health, aesthetics. We tend to ignore the aesthetic value of what? The environment. But you go to some of these places, you see that the whole environment is scarred with pits, right? As opposed to a pristine type of environment where you have all these forested, nice forests or savanna or maybe a river, valley, etc. If you compare the areas that have not been mined with the areas that have been mined, aesthetically you can actually see the difference. I have, I have done a lot of work in several places and anytime you go to some of these mining areas, you, they, most of the places, especially the artisanal mining areas, the, the informal type, the illegal type. The areas look so destroyed, degraded, desolate, and you compare with just the immediate vicinity and the contrast is just so obvious. So here we'll just take a look at some photos just to remind ourselves of the things that we talk about. Now, over here, we talked about exploration, and sometimes we think that illegal miners, they only go in there and then they just take what they have to take. But some actually go and do systematic work, what we may categorize as what? Exploration. They go in and search. Whether by experience, some of them may have what? Had the, the experience from exploration companies or mining companies. So in the same way that we also go in and do, they may also have that. In fact, in some of the places, you have some people even going in, and then they do that, and then they sell out, okay, what they have to others. Now, uh, at this point, you see there is a man there just pointing to this, okay? They saw a vein, and then they began to what? Trace, just like we all do. So we should not tend to think that they, 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 what they are doing is not so much of what? A systematic or unskilled type. They may have gained the experience, they utilize these things there. How do these factor in the sort of impacts that we have? Because if you have an exploration company that comes in to train people, right? They may not necessarily think of it as training, but once the people work with the exploration company, the exploration company folds, right? Folds up, okay? It goes away. Now, the people that haven't had that experience would want to what? Transit and use that to their benefit. All these will factor in the sort of impact. So if we have to have a policy, how do we look at this? Is that okay? We have to look at these things critically. Um, at that end there, you see me in my full gear, right? With a bald head and trying to do something, just trying to make sense out of what people are doing. And then in some cases you go there, they have a whole lot of things that they also do in order to prospect. So they also do a lot of those things. We should not think that they, because they don't have the, 
the knowledge, they don't do some of those things. They obviously do. Now let's compare that with the so-called, so that was the, the first one was the informal or the mainly illegal type. Now if you come to the formal type, things are quite well organized. They go in for their licensing, their, their permission process, they go to the EPA, they go through every process, they go in there, look at where they have to mine, do a lot of things, plot the areas, etc., etc. So things are far more organized where even they put their processing plants. You can see waste, they have a sum there to collect the waste. So most of the environmental impacts we tend to think in a way that these may have better performance in terms of the environmental impacts than the others. But I can also assure you that sometimes we can't even know what these things, okay, as they go in there, the impact of these on groundwater resources, right? The impact on the surrounding environment. Most of these things, because we don't tend to look critically at these, we may tend to think that this is about the best option insofar as the mining activities may be concerned. But I can also assure you that sometimes it may not necessarily be so. Now we take a look at a few others. Are we doing this thing on the surface or if it's the artisanal mining, since the topic is an artisanal mining, if it's a surface type and to the top left you have a surface type illegal, mainly illegal miners spread out, you go to the site, you have thousands of them. Now I know that maybe at this time because of the president's, uh, what do you call it, the, the present <laughs> prevailing environment, most of them would have what? Absconded. Sometimes they will be hiding there in the night, they may go, they watch, they look around and then once a while they go in. But this, if it's the surface type, you normally would have a greater surface area being impacted compared to maybe the, uh, the subsurface type. Where they go in, they have these pits, they go in. If it's alluvial, it's also the same compared to maybe the hard rock. Okay, so they go in there, they take the hard rock, they bring that out, and then they mine. Obviously, the impacts may also be different. Now then, we go back a little bit. We talked about geographic location, but I will fuse that with the, the, the nature of the material. Now, throughout West Africa, we have a lot of rocks or materials that host gold, maybe diamonds. If you go to Sierra Leone, they have some diamonds. Right, compared to Ghana, I would say lots of diamonds. Um, you go to Mali, you go to Burkina, you go to Niger, Senegal, etc. The rock systems, they don't know political boundaries. And they came in before we came. So you have all these distributions of what? Materials that may host what we want or what people want. Now these may tend to detect the impacts. You don't see people coming to Accra to look for gold or diamonds. The question is why? Because they are not in those rocks. So if we are talking about mining, we have to go where the material is. And throughout West Africa, we have all these things, what we call the West African Craton. Most of these rocks have these materials. So definitely people will gravitate, people will move towards these areas, whether it's light scale, medium scale, or small scale. So if we are talking about the impacts, we also have to take into consideration the nature of the materials, their distribution across space, and then also across time. How were they formed? When were they formed? Etc. Are we likely to find gold in here? Once we know where these things are distributed, they may then tend to what? Exert some influence on the likely impacts that we have on the environment. Now in our Ghanaian situation, I'm sure Mr. Seydou also talked about these things yesterday. So we also have areas where you normally would tend to there's a high possibility of finding gold. As compared to, as I talked about Accra, you hardly get Galamse people in Accra. So they won't come here. Even if you give them $1,000 for an hour, they won't come. But they would rather go to the places where they think they will find the gold. Okay, so these are the places where our impacts should what? Anything about impact should more or less what? Focus or be focused. Uh, this is just a translation from the other one in Ghana where we have all these things. These were taken from the Minerals Commission, etc. You have areas where traditionally some corridors, some narrow areas where you have the gold. 
right? In all these areas too, in some of them you do have, but not as much as these areas where maybe Mr. Seydoux talked about the belts and basins. Now the geographic location, I already talked about that, but I'll just briefly go through. Where are we doing that in streams, in river val uh, valleys? Indeed, if you go to some of these areas, some of the streams, the channels, you don't even find any channel anymore. Why? Because they go in there and take these materials and they, they, the impact is so obvious, enormous, huge. Now, in some case here, in, on the right hand side, they have actually diverted the stream channel to make way for, for what? Mining. And these are all illegal miners. So you go to some areas and for a kilometer or more, you don't even find the channel anymore. Once it rains, there is a possibility that they say water will normally what? Find its own level. So about three, four years ago, the flooding that occurred in the Akimoda area. This is the Kibi, uh, the Brim River. Okay, that is what precipitated because you have so much of the material being dumped in the river channel such that once the, 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 the heavy precipitation came in, it had no choice but to what? Find its own level around and it led to flooding which unfortunately led to loss of lives, etc, etc. So most of these things are actually exacted upon ourselves. Now where the thing is located, we talked about that. Now look at the, the nice forest vegetation in the background and compare that to the almost desolate area here. Okay, so the impacts in this case, the forested environment, in terms of the location, the land, vegetation, everything, forest cover, more or less what? Okay, destroyed. Now this is going to take uh, a longer period of time to what? Regenerate, okay? Even if we are to plant the trees. Now look at the ponds filled with water. All these things will still be there. Now here, once again, is the Brim River. You have lots of what, debris heaped just what? Are they, are, they, are they just close to the what, the river? Now obviously most of these things will end up in there. And once again, the cause of lots of the flooding that happened. The nature of the material they take, if it's the hard rock, you may not be able, given the tools, the rudimentary tools that they have, except for, you know, recent events where they have what, all these excavators and others. It becomes very difficult for them to take so much of the material and therefore in terms of impacts it will not normally be as huge as if you have the alluvial type. So in a hard rock uh, artisanal mining type here they normally would have what, a harder time taking out the material because it's quite hard. Okay so and whatever they take they can then grind and then they bring out the they bring out the, um, the ore, they try to process. Now here too you have the alluvial, and the, the material in more or less an environment. There is no stream there. We talked about the location. But here they just take the material. You see the guy shoveling there. He goes in there and then they process and in no time they have their gold. Okay, they have their gold. So you can imagine in this place, look at the processing method, the sluice box. Just a simple rudimentary kind of what? Arrangement to take out the material. The impacts would obviously be far less compared to something huge. Now, once again, the mining and processing. Here you have somebody going into a pit, hard rock. They go in there, they bring the material. Here, they are, okay, they are processing, trying to break the material down because they don't have the requisite equipment to be able to break it, to grind, to break it down into that form, that fine form. So they go in there, the first grind, but look at the gentleman. He's just using what? A hammer. Without any what? Safety gear. Now here too, they are doing the processing. Could be quite deafening. You look over there and once again, this gentleman is just the sort of uh, dust that comes out. But he's just standing there and then what? Working all day, maybe sometimes weeks, months. Now, if you have, we talked about a, a single person. This is a man and the, the, the girlfriend around there doing, doing work in an area. If you compare that, okay, not a sister. I interviewed, I interviewed, I, 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 a man and a wife. A man and he said a girlfriend. I teased them and then, okay, so you have that. Now, compared to some, some people using a processor, right? So obviously this one will have less impact compared to 
Okay, that one. And then where you have a huge processor, normally the impact will be on the environment will be far more. And here too, you have what? An excavator to be able to excavate, and then a huge processor. So once again, the impact's very huge. Now, some of the things that come out of the processing. Here you have oxidized type iron material, mainly maybe iron oxide. Now, it's in water, but once they process, this thing comes out as iron 2. When it comes out, it reacts with oxygen. You then have these what, dark precipitates of iron 3 oxides. Now, the impact on the environment is anybody's guess. Now, people have been talking of late about uh, the impact on food security, on cocoa, et cetera, et cetera. You go to some places and then you can see the cocoa uh, farm in the background. People sell these things to make way for what? Mining, right? So apart from the physical impact on the environment, the impact on also maybe cocoa production, et cetera, would also be quite huge. Now, just to bring in our nice cocoa, the Ghanaian cocoa, you go to some of the places, you see these things. We should, we should admire some of these. Now, some of the environmental impacts here, mercury use, et cetera, et cetera, right? Bending over mercury without any protective gear, just roasting the material on your top right corner. You bring in the water. It's not all negative, as I said. Over here, where there was once no water, you have water coming out. So all these plants are more or less smiling. Okay, in the dry season, but you can actually see so... When we talk of impacts, there are some negative impacts, there are some benefits also. We look at governance issue. Now, how do we look at ASM licensing procedure? Is there, we talked about governance, right? Are these things also contributing to the impacts? Because if we have to spend a lot of time to go through all these, how can we make the law simpler, the rules simpler, so that people can easily access? All these are also factors that we have to work on. So what kind of strategy should we adopt? I think that instead of waiting always and then doing laws and laws and laws, we should think about a far more workable strategy that may be well grounded. Take into consideration the, the, what? the, the interests of people in the communities. If we don't do that, all these tax forces and all these things, they cannot be everywhere all the time. That is a fact. Whether you train them, you give them all the, the drones and everything, as I said, they say, what, laws don't work, it's people that do. So those people who do that, so they must have an interest in the outcomes. Otherwise, most of the, the, the measures that we take may not necessarily, we may spend so much money, effort, time, they may not work. I think that education should be the key. Education, education, education. And I would suggest preemptive education. What do we mean by preemptive education? We don't have to wait for the mining to go to the place because we know approximately where these things occur. So we can go to those places, educate the younger ones, educate the people, and by so doing, of the, mostly the negative impacts and the benefits of coming on stream, formality, etc. If we do that, then we have a chance of what? Tapping them even before formal education, informal education, all very important, the schools. Informal, the people in the villages who may not be well, literates. We can go there, educate them, dramatize, do a lot of things. And we target them with initiatives so that those will then tend to benefit. And just to enjoy some of the things as we walk through some of the areas, nature would have mined some of the things already. Because you can see, if you look at that pebble there, there's a village there, one time it was on the surface, right? It was on the surface, and then now you see it hanging just like that. So it's not only human beings that can mine, nature itself can what? <laughs> also mine. Now, I acknowledge John and the Panavju Executives, Minerals Commission, several other people who contributed to this. Thank you very much.